as well if you don't know me my name is shish and i make videos on fashion beauty and more and today's video is going to be the second in i guess my breast reduction journey series of videos that i'm putting on my youtube channel um so yeah in case you didn't know i had a breast reduction in january of this year 2021 i'm basically making these videos because i have been so unbelievably helped by all of the women who have documented their stories on like YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, all of these different places online. It really just helped me be more prepared and feel a bit more calm in undergoing the process myself. So I just wanted to hopefully add to kind of that wealth of information that's already out there. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully I can help at least, you know, one or two people. So in this video, I basically have kind of all of my documentation of my journey up until now. So we've got consultation number one, number two, pre-op appointments, day of surgery, day one post-op, my two-week post-op appointment and then just how I'm feeling now. So it's going to be a bit of a long one so get a cup of tea, coffee, chocolate milk, you know whatever your vibe is and get comfy. <laughs> I'll also be including some pictures and video footage of what I looked like before and then comparing that to what I look like now. I'm a bit hesitant to say after because I am only at one month post-op and things will be changing, swelling will be going down for up to a year. So what I'm looking like now is not necessarily what I'm going to be looking like a year down the line, but obviously it's helpful to see what someone is looking like at you know any stage in their process. So yeah. Why did I have the surgery? Um, I had the surgery because of unrelenting back pain. I was a size 34 double G at the time of surgery and honestly the weight on my neck and my back was just, it just caused a pain that I really could not handle. It was a pain that painkillers didn't help, like paracetamol, ibuprofen, like it just didn't, just didn't do anything and it was really affecting me not just physically but also mentally like I just felt so <sighs> depleted all the time it was just something that I couldn't handle anymore I had originally kind of thought okay let me try maybe losing some weight you know I because obviously you don't really know unless you kind of have you know a scan or whatever how much of your breast is actual breast tissue and how much of it is fats because I've seen a lot of people who've kind of said like oh well, why don't you just lose weight and that can work with some people but for me I lost 51 pounds before my surgery and the only thing that changed was my band size I started off as a 38 double G and just before my surgery I was a 34 double G so I mean, for me, it very much kind of cemented what I feel like I already knew, but again, weight loss can be an option. And I think it is what a lot of doctors would suggest as well, kind of when you're first, you know, undergoing this process. So I lost the weight and nothing really changed. I still had a lot of back pain, a lot of neck pain. And when I spoke to my parents about it, they were just kind of like, well, you know you should have this surgery and we you know fully support you 100% so I'd originally started off by talking to my GP about it um just about my back pain and my neck pain and he had also suggested a breast reduction but what he had said was that basically if you are trying to get it done on the NHS you have at least a two-year wait if you're lucky if you're accepted and even then because of the pandemic like obviously hospitals are so overwhelmed at the moment and it's just not realistic that it would be done any time in the future as that kind of surgery is obviously not you know the highest priority which makes 100 percent sense so I had kind of resigned myself to the fact that okay you know I'm gonna have to wait for a while but luckily and I'm gonna get really emotional talking about this I think I think I need a minute luckily um my parents um said you know what if you need this surgery we're not having you wait x amount of years and just being in pain so they they helped me financially with the surgery and without them I would not have been able to undergo this um, privately for a good many years so I'm just eternally grateful for them for their not just their financial support but their emotional support they're the most amazing parents ever and yeah I'm 
I love them. They're great. So, mum and dad, if you end up watching this, which I doubt you will, but if you do, I love you. <laughs> so, my dad is actually a plastic surgeon as well. Obviously, he did not do the surgery. I feel like that needs to be said, but because he is a surgeon too, he obviously knows a lot of plastic surgeons. So, when we were kind of discussing, okay, you're actually going to have the surgery, he said, I know the surgeon, he's great, he's got good results, and I really trust him. So, go have a consultation with him and see how you feel. So I originally reached out to his secretary kind of mid-September of 2020 and his first appointment was a month later which was mid-October 2020 and I had my consultation with him. I felt very comfortable. I felt listened to and empathized with and was just very happy. Like from the get-go I was just like yeah I'm, I'm happy to have my surgery with him so I will have kind of all of the footage of you know me kind of recapping what happened in that consultation and all of that kind of stuff. One thing I will just say you know obviously I had kind of the process of finding a surgeon very expedited because I guess I had inside knowledge but one thing that is so important that I cannot stress enough is to do your research. Research the surgeon, see if you can find any before and after pics, any patient testimonials. And you know, when you go for your consultations, if it doesn't feel right, then you don't have to go with them. It's a really major surgery, you know, someone is literally cutting you open, sewing you back together and changing your life forever. So you want to make sure that you are with someone that you feel really comfortable with and, you know, that you trust and feel heard and listened to and validated. You don't want anyone who's gaslighting you or making you feel uncomfortable or not listening to what you want. Um, so yeah, I feel like that definitely needs to be said. So I'm going to let all of the footage roll of I guess everything, and then I will bring you up to speed with how things are going now. Hi! So today is the day of my breast reduction consultation, and yeah, I'm feeling really nervous actually. Um, well, I've met the surgeon once before, just briefly at like a social thing, because he's one of my dad's colleagues, and he's really lovely. So I'm not nervous about like meeting with him or anything like that, but it's more so just. I guess nervous excitement, like it feels like the ball is really gonna get set rolling now um, and yeah I'm really excited about that. Um, so I have my list of questions that I want to ask him and also some before and after pictures that I found on like real self um, of women who seem to be of a similar build to me just so I can kind of give him an idea of what I'm hoping to achieve. Um, with the reduction and then yeah he can kind of just advise me <laughs> uh from there on what he thinks is realistic and you know all the stuff that surgeons do during a consultation oh i'm feeling i'm feeling ready to go <laughs> um i'm wearing just this like cardigan from zara which you would have seen um if you watch my autumnal haul um, but yeah it's just this like pink cardigan and then i have like a heat tech top from um Uniqlo so it's a bit chilly today and then I'm wearing this really pretty like floral chiffon skirt so it's a nice comfy comfy outfit and yeah I guess I will catch up with you afterwards <laughs> hi so I have just gotten back from my consultation I'm feeling very tired <laughs> so apologies if I seem a bit low energy um but yeah so basically got to the site um they like outside and kind of like this pop-up tent thing um they asked me what my last name was asked if i'd had any symptoms of covid all of that kind of stuff they used that kind of temperature like gun thing to check my temperature and then i was provided with a mask so i didn't go in wearing my own mask which i had on already uh i got inside went to reception gave them like my registration forms and then from there just sat down and waited and then i went in to see him he basically started off by asking why i wanted a breast reduction gauging what my pain was like where i was having pain and if whether it was emotionally affecting me as well and then after talking about I guess the background for a while he gave me some privacy to take off my 
um, like top and bra and all of that stuff. And then he came back in with the nurse and he took some measurements. So he measured um, my breast when I was like sitting on the like bed thing. And then also what it was like when I was lying down. So like length of the breasts, um, the under boob and areola diameter and like, all of that kind of stuff and then made his notes and then after that he again gave me privacy so I could redress and then we started talking again and when we were talking again he drew me some diagrams and kind of illustrated how the procedure would be for me said based on my breast size and the shape the um procedure would be the, uh, using the anchor incision which is what I was expecting I didn't really think that the lollipop would be very viable <laughs> for me so I guess yeah he just kind of confirmed what I had been thinking he was just kind of telling me what risks there are like dog earring necrosis um what else uh hematoma and yeah then he asked if I had any questions and so I got out my notebook uh so I asked would you need to do a free nipple graft he said no those only really get done in like rare cases and you're certainly not a case that would need one um what else did I ask I asked whether there would be an overnight hospital stay and he said yes most likely around three to four days um i asked whether there would be drains needed he said yes he does use drains and probably for the first um it's usually for the first day maybe sometimes it's two days and then i was like oh yay <laughs> i feel like all of the other women that i've watched who've been through this journey are always like the drains were the worst part so i mean one or two days i think is fine i'm probably gonna be so loopy on pain medication that it's gonna be okay um what else do i ask Oh yeah, I forgot to mention before he had asked um, what kind of size I would want to go down to and I said a D and so I asked him whether um, he thought he'd be able to get me down to where I was hoping and he said um, obviously we cannot guarantee cup size but I can most likely get you you know within like a large C small D that kind of range <laughs> what did he say he was really funny he was like you go to two um, like bra shops and that you get three different sizes <laughs> um, which is true I mean you measure differently in different brands and that kind of thing um, but he said yeah probably around small like a large c small d and then he also asked me whether you know when he is operating and they come to a stage where they're like oh she's maybe looking a bit too big would you rather being left a bit big or would you rather be smaller and i said smaller <laughs> so he was like okay that's really helpful that will really help on the day what else did i ask oh i asked whether post-op bras are going to be provided and he said yeah the hospital will provide you with some post-op bras and, then, and i asked him what the timeline would look like so he basically said should you want to proceed with me operating on you to send an email to his secretary and then um, just let her know that yeah I'm happy to go forward and then they would schedule another meeting with him this second meeting would be over the phone or on zoom or skype or whatever following that he said because of the restrictions that kind of the private hospitals are under just in the sense that they've been kind of partially nationalized i guess that's a kind of a good way of thinking of it because they have been kind of taken over partially by the nhs the surgeons do not have as many lists to operate on their patients under privately so that basically means that the wait list has become longer they also aren't being um, told that much in advance when they will be able to operate because of that he said he does have a pretty like reason reasonably sized wait list but obviously there's people who will be at the top of the list they'll give them the date and they can't do that date for whatever reason so then they just kind of keep going down the list so from there he was like yeah so honestly I cannot tell you <laughs> when we be able to have the surgery but you know it will happen when it can happen and I had been expecting that, um, so that, like I said probably earlier, but my dad is a plastic surgeon as well, so I've been seeing firsthand kind of the struggle <laughs> to operate on, you know, the private patients, but 
I mean, obviously, I was kind of hoping, like, oh, you'd be like, we can do you next month. But I mean, I knew it wasn't realistic. So yeah, that was basically it. Uh, so I guess I will talk to you when I next have an update. Okay, bye. everyone so i just wanted to hop on just to tell you what happened during my second consultation so it was just over the phone it was less than 10 minutes he just started by kind of recapping what we had spoken about in the first consultation which was in person and then um he was asking me if i had any questions but to be honest i didn't really have any he had answered all the questions that i had um, at the first consult so yeah that was pretty straightforward and then he was asking me um yeah how I was feeling about everything whether I would still like to continue on um in the process after having two weeks yeah it's been just over two weeks to mull things over and I just said yeah I'm still happy still want to go ahead 100% so he just let me know that um, the NHS private hospital contract that I would have mentioned earlier that changes in December so he said they're not really sure what it's going to look like but he's projecting that we'd probably be able to do my surgery sometime in the early new year so fingers crossed that can happen and yeah I guess I will update you when I have my date so I just got a phone with my surgeon secretary um she just let me know that the lists for the surgeons are going back to normal from the beginning of the new year and asked me if I wanted to schedule in for the 20th of January to have my surgery <laughs> so I obviously said yes um and yeah <laughs> I'm feeling so excited and just yeah I can't believe it I mean it's exactly two months from now so I've got a good time to just kind of emotionally prepare physically prepare with buying all the like pillows and post-op brows and all of the stuff that I might need but yeah I'm just really excited so yeah <laughs> Good morning everyone, so today is the 17th of January, it is the day of my COVID test and my pre-op appointment, so I'm not 100% sure what is going to happen in the pre-op appointment, so I will report back once I am back from that, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be being measured for a pre-op bra, being weighed, having blood work done, all of that kind of stuff, but yeah, I will let you know when I'm back. I literally just finished filming at my video where I'm talking about what I have bought to prepare for surgery and also what I'm packing in my bag uh, to take with me to the hospital so I will put that in the card I guess above <laughs> uh, or maybe I'll have linked that earlier in this video um, but yeah so I guess I will speak to you when I'm back <laughs> Okay, so I've literally just gotten back from my appointment just this minute um, and I thought that it was going to be me getting like measured and weighed and like all of that jazz but it was literally just a COVID swab and a blood test. So he said that if I don't hear anything that's good news, that means that, you know, the tests come back negative. Um, so that's what I'm praying for, but yeah, so I'll keep you updated. <laughs> Currently the 20th of January is my surgery day and yeah, I'm feeling very nervous. Um, last night, I think it just all really hit me. I'd been feeling pretty calm leading up to it, but yeah, last night I kind of just had a bit of um, an anxiety situation. Like my stomach was definitely like feeling not good. Um, and yeah, I did not sleep well. I think I woke up like around three or four times. Um, but yeah, it's currently 10 plus six in the morning. My admission time is 7 a.m. So my mom is gonna drive me to the hospital. And yeah, I guess I'll update you when I'm there, depending on how I'm feeling. And 
yeah okay so this is my bed set up it's all ready for when i come back so <laughs> have all my plushes waiting on the side for me to come back but i've got my pregnancy pillow kind of set up here and then there's two pillows behind it and then there's also this pillow in the middle to kind of support my back and then uh, so I'll go like in the middle and then I have this one which will go under my knees and as I mentioned in my video which is kind of like my prep video what I got to prepare um this one will go underneath my knees because that eases the pressure on your spine if you are lying on your back which I will have to be doing for a while so that's already did all my laundry yesterday um washed my hair yesterday I've got a bunch of water waiting um, next to my bed and yeah, I think I'm ready. I hope I'm ready, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so this is my surgery room. Very, very nice. Got a TV here, which is good because the inauguration in the States is on um, today. So I kind of want to watch that. Um, yeah, this is my bed. I just put like my, uh, most of my kind of facial toiletries here. Um, I've got my book. I actually ended up taking this one instead of the um, other one that I showed in my video, just because I thought this might be an easier read. I have my iPad. Uh, they gave me these tissues, which is nice. And this machine, I don't really know what that does. Um, yeah, that's the bed. And then bathroom is in here. Like shower, um, some toiletries here, which is nice. And here I am. <laughs> The morning after surgery, um, I am in bed, feeling much better than I was yesterday. Um, yeah, yesterday was rough. Um, I went into surgery, I think around like 8.30 in the morning. Can't remember what time I came out. I was so out of it um, and was just feeling um, nauseous, but I didn't throw up which is good um but yeah just feeling nauseous and could not eat anything i think all i ate yesterday was half a fruit salad if that maybe less than half um but yeah and i was literally just drifting in and out of sleep um and then in the night the nurse was coming to take my blood pressure every two hours so i was just kind of um getting like sort of an hour and a half intervals of sleep here and there but I'm actually feeling better than I thought I would so I'm just trying to drink a bunch of water because I'm feeling very dehydrated um yeah so this is currently what things are looking like which is crazy I mean you can't really see and it's looking weird because there's like gauze here but really really happy definitely even though I haven't really seen them because it's all like taped up and bandaged and stuff but yeah I'm feeling very excited this morning I was able to like wipe my face with a micellar water and then like did all my like skincare stuff so I'm definitely feeling a bit more like myself um but yeah definitely feeling a bit better. I am in quite, not a crazy amount of pain. I'm no longer on the morphine pump. It's just diclofenac and paracetamol now. Um, yeah, that's kind of what's going on this morning. Um, and then the nurse is coming in again soon and she's gonna put me in the bra. I can't remember if I already said that. My brain is like, at the moment um but she basically said from the drains that i have not drained as much as they were thinking i would i can't remember how much it was 
or in the middle of the night, I think it was only 10 mils of blood had come out. Um, so she said they're gonna see what it's looking like this afternoon and if there still isn't that much, then they'll take the drains out and will send me home this evening, which is a lot earlier than I thought was possible. But they said that if there is still quite a bit coming out or if there is a bit more coming out rather, then they'll keep me in front of the night. So yeah, I guess I'll keep you updated, but yeah, I'm gonna drink the rest of my peppermint tea, have some water, and rest. Morning everyone, it's currently, I guess technically day two post-op, and it says the 22nd <laughs> of January today. Um, I've been discharged this morning, um, but I just thought I would show you what things are looking like. Um, so basically on the day of surgery I wasn't able to eat anything, basically just half a fruit cup and that was it because I was feeling too nauseous, but yesterday I was basically just forcing myself um, to eat some food because even though I didn't have any appetite, I knew I needed to eat. Um, so my stomach wasn't too irritated by all the painkillers, so today I've started to get some bloating, which you can probably see from my tummy here, but this is how flat my chest- oh my god, I'm really bloated. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um, and yeah, like I've got my drains right here, which are kind of distorting everything, and then they're just in this bag, but um, yeah, I still can't believe how small my chest is looking. And like, this is only day two, so I mean, things are hopefully gonna decrease with swelling, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I definitely am feeling very bloated now. It's not super, super uncomfortable, but I can like feel it starting to kind of cause some issues, so. I'll keep you updated, but yeah. So it is currently exactly two weeks post-op and I am feeling a lot more like a human being. Um, my energy levels are returning now. I'd say probably in the last like three or four days, I've really felt like a marked improvement in just how much energy I have. I'm not needing to kind of nap like for three or four hours every day like I did in the first week. Um, yeah, that first week, my energies were basically just not, my, yeah, my energy levels were non-existent. Um, and I was asleep most of the time, which, I mean, your body needs the rest to heal. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty, pretty good at the moment. Um, pain is not so bad. Um, I'm only really needing to take some ibuprofen, like, towards the end of the night, like, close to when I'm going to sleep, because I've kind of felt like it just feels like very tight in that area like i don't know if it's really swelling because i can't really tell um just from the way that i'm taped up at the moment um but this two week post-op appointment which i am attending today so that's basically the first time i'm going to be seeing my surgeon and like all the nurses and stuff since having the surgery so they're going to be removing all the tape and like i mean you can kind of see but I have my like post-op bra here and then I'm taped like all the way up to here so I can't really see what's going on in there so I'm pretty nervous to actually see what the incisions look like. I feel like that's going to make it feel, I don't know, more real almost. I, I don't know, um, but I'm excited for sure. I guess I'll just keep you updated. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's like that you'd need to know right now. This is my first day I've done like my makeup and like my hair and actually worn something that's not like pajamas or like a nightgown since having the surgery. I'm definitely feeling a lot more like myself, like me and 
yeah i mean just looking in the mirror at myself it's still so surreal that i can see like my torso or more of my torso and i don't know i just feel like i look so different like i feel like i look a bit slimmer um yeah it's pretty pretty crazy but anyway i'll let you know what happens when i'm back from the doctor <laughs> All right, so I am back from uh, the doctor. Um, I saw my surgeon and yeah, all I can say is, ouch. The surgical tape was, was really stuck on there and it was painful to peel off, but I definitely am feeling a lot better now that it's no longer on, but oh my goodness, it was, yeah, it was sore. And then kind of like the starry strips that were underneath the gauze and the initial tape. Um, yeah, that, that oh my God. But <laughs> it's off now, which is good. I'm definitely not feeling any of like the tightness that I had um, been feeling previously, kind of like towards the evening. So I think, yeah, it, it was because of the way I was kind of like taped up before. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, so basically he took off the, like all the surgical tape, the serious strips, and then he, and the nurse were basically just cleaning around um just cleaning like all the dried blood and like all of that kind of stuff and then from there um i had a look at well he had a look at them first and he said that he's happy with how everything's looking that it's all healing well and then he basically put on some micropore tape and then just instructed me on how i should apply those onto my anchor incisions he said i don't really need to apply them around the areola but if i'm feeling so inclined i can um and then he basically just said to only really be changing it when it's falling off and the less frequently i can change it the better because when you're kind of pulling it off it does sort of pull on the incisions and stuff like that so he said when it's kind of naturally peeling off and it's not feeling like it's tugging too much then that's a good time to take it off so he gave me that yeah and then he just said so to keep on wearing a post-surgery bra for another about six weeks for 24 hours and then from there just wear one during the day and then at night you can kind of switch to like a vest top or like that kind of thing so you don't really need like as much compression and then he said i can shower again i'm okay to get the area wet because that was one thing um that kind of post-op when i had been discharged they were like don't get the area wet for two weeks like don't get it wet so he said that i can get it wet i can shower now but just not to sort of soak um the chest area he said so like the water can kind of run down like the soapy water and stuff like that but don't like stand and like soak yourself and then in terms of scar treatment he said that basically um at around the six week mark that's when he would suggest as long as there's no openings or anything like that to be massaging the scars with moisturizer he said is fine um but he also recommended bio oil he said a lot of his patients have used that and have been quite happy with it and he was just saying that if the scars are like thickening up and starting to kind of look keloid like um then he would really suggest like um silicone based treatments or even like steroids but he said if you're not prone to keloiding it's probably not what you would feel like you need to do so in terms of like silicone treatments i don't know because i feel like most of the women that i've seen online have just done that anyway um so i mean i'll see how things are looking how i'm feeling um on scar treatment so i will keep you updated um but yeah, uh, other than that, um, it was pretty quick. I think it was around half an hour it was there, so it wasn't that long. Um, I'm just trying to think if I had asked him anything else, but I can't think of anything else. He also had said that around the three week mark, that's kind of when 
things can go wrong in terms of incisions because you said people are usually feeling a bit more like their normal selves they're kind of doing more around the house like lifting heavier things and stuff like that and the incisions can kind of um or like the scars that they're healing um can kind of suffer as a result so he said just make sure you're extra extra careful um and that you're not overdoing it yeah i think that's pretty much it. I mean, I took some notes on my phone, so if there was anything that I miss out, I will just like put like, I'll put it, put it on the screen now. Okay, so I just look back at the notes I had taken uh, just after my appointment. Um, there was one thing which I forgot to mention in the previous clip, and that was that he said, in terms of getting like or buying like new proper like underwire brows and stuff like that, he said he wouldn't recommend doing that until around three or four months post op. He said that's usually when things have kind of tended to settle a bit more, and, like swelling has gone down to more like what it would be like usually so yeah i guess i'll update you at one month <laughs> okay so the last thing you would have seen it would have been i guess my recap of my two-week post-op appointment and like i said pulling the tape off was very painful um i mean I've seen some people who have said that it wasn't that painful for them um, and even my surgeon himself said that like for some people they had adhesive is not as sticky on them for other people you know it's really stuck on there and unfortunately I was just in the latter group and also because of that like some of kind of like the top layers of my skin kind of got peeled off so I have had like I think it's mainly like under here um, and then kind of like in here just like little patches um where yeah some skin got peeled off um unfortunately but it wasn't anything there wasn't any bleeding or anything like that but it was just like kind of tender to the touch um and then also there oh sorry i'm looking down because i have my notes in my notebook so <laughs> um <laughs> that's why yeah that's just something that um just brace yourself for um so from there, I basically have just been taping the incisions myself with micropore tape. And so this is what it looks like. It's just like a flesh, well I say flesh. It's um, a flesh colored kind of skin tape that you put on and you just put on the T junction of the incisions. And this is basically to help everything heal flat. Um, so I basically have been changing this around once a week. Yeah, it's pretty simple stuff. And then I just have to keep taping for six weeks. And well, I have to tape for six weeks in total. So I've got, I think another two more weeks of wearing this. And then I'm gonna switch to like my scar care regimen. So I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. So the pain, um, I mean, to be honest, I feel like every time I watch a video or every time I see someone talking about it, they're always like, oh, I have a pretty high pain threshold and it wasn't that bad or, you know, I think if I were to rank the pain immediately after surgery out of 10, well, literally immediately, like in the recovery room, like first waking up, I was in like pain, probably like around the seven out of 10. Um, and then they just kind of like, kicked that morphine pump in a little bit more and it was okay. Uh, when I first got home, I would say I was still in quite a bit of pain, but it wasn't necessarily like a constant like owl pain. It was more just like a real soreness. Um, but keeping on top of your pain medication is super important, obviously. I would say for me, the main kind of turning point was in terms of pain management, probably about two weeks, two and a half weeks. That was kind of when, rather than having kind of an all over pain in this whole area, it was more so a kind of localized pain and it just felt like a bruising. And that would really only be a problem when I was kind of moving around quite a lot. In general, I'd say that my right side has been the more swollen side and the more painful side, but I am right-handed, this is my dominant side, so it makes sense that that would be kind of the area that would, you know, the healing is slightly, I don't know if I'd say slightly delayed, because in terms of how the incisions, like everything actually is looking really good at the moment, but um, 
it's just the side that's you know a little bit more tender a little bit more sore so in terms of everything that i bought to help me prepare for the surgery so you may or may not have seen um, my initial video that i did kind of the start of this series which was what i bought to prep and also what i was packing my hospital bag so if you haven't seen that i'll put that in the card above um but in terms of everything i bought i use pretty much everything but there were a couple of things that i didn't say in that video that i I would definitely recommend. Number one is ice packs. So I thought that we had some in my house, but we didn't. So I just ordered some um, on Amazon, which I mean, Amazon, but I needed them to get their ASAP. And I just got a pack of two. I'll link them down below. They were really cheap. I think it was like maybe like four pounds or maybe even less, but I'll link them down below anyway. I would use those, but instead of putting them in the freezer, I would actually just put them in the fridge. Um, and I felt that that was kind of a good sort of temperature for them to be um, just to kind of ease a little bit of the pain and the swelling and I would only ever really have them on for like five minutes at a time nothing longer than that just because if you do keep it on for an extended period of time it can mess with your healing a bit also I would say that I wish I had brought a neck pillow with me to the hospital um, I basically really messed up my neck when I was in the hospital because for some reason rather than using like you know the button the hospital beds have to kind of like move you up when I needed to go to the bathroom I decided to just like <laughs> try and get myself up but I guess you don't really or maybe this was just me but I didn't really actually realize how much of my chest muscles I use on a day-to-day -day basis like even just getting up out of bed I wasn't really using like my core it was more my chest muscles so I really strained my neck and it was really hurting for the rest of the time and I just wish I had had a neck pillow because I feel like that would have made things feel like a little bit better. And there are also a couple of things that I didn't mention in that video but have just been kind of helpful to me so I thought I would just mention. Zoff wipes. So I was provided a couple of these by my surgeon um, but I also just bought myself some more and these are just adhesive remover wipes so when like the tapes were removed I still had like a lot of like stick just sticky stuff on my skin um, that I wanted to get rid of and so these helped really well but I ran out of the ones that he gave me like really quickly so I just bought a couple more and it was pretty cheap for like a box of 20 I think it was maybe like around five pounds or so but yeah these work really well and I would definitely recommend having a few of these on hand um, just before the surgery. Also steri strips as well um, I haven't had any like incisions like splitting open or anything like that I just had the tiny like literally the tiniest like smaller than half a grain of rice like area where the skin split in my cleavage and it wasn't even a big it wasn't a gaping hole it was literally so small where it was bleeding so I just used some steri strips on the advice of my surgeon I just used some steri strips just to kind of like <laughs> them back together and then I put the micropore tape on top of that and that worked really well so again if you don't have any steri strips at home I would recommend getting some. In terms of massaging the scars I haven't really started yet just because things aren't completely completely healed um I think that's something I'll probably start at about six weeks but something that has been kind of helpful just to do a little bit of massaging where things are not super painful and things are healed up is one of these like rose quartz rollers which super random i mean obviously I use it for my face normally um but putting this in the fridge and then using this end just to roll and like massage along the incision lines over the micropore tape i started doing this maybe like three days ago or so and then again once i'm at six weeks and i'm cleared to start um my kind of scar care routine by my doctor then yeah i will be kind of incorporating this a bit more so i think probably at my i'm thinking of doing a two months post-op video so if i do do that then i will um just let you know how i'm planning on doing that just let you know i'll probably end up using silicone strips i think that's 
yeah i think that's probably what i'll do um but my dad did also actually recommend kilo coat scar gel so i just need to do a bit more research on like scar you know recovery and scar treatment and all of that kind of stuff so i will keep you updated in whenever my next video is so in terms of bras i know that in my um kind of breast reduction prep video that i had i showed you the bras that i bought so it was this one or i've only got one here so it's this one from a brand called Delamira, um and it's just like this and then this is what the back is looking like. My review of them is very positive. I have really liked this actually. It's not, the band is not like too tight along the incisions. Um, it fits pretty well. And what I like is that, cause I'm, I mean, you can see I'm wearing a pretty low cup top today and that's just to kind of show you what things are looking like. Um, but I like that you can wear something that's a bit more low cut and these bras won't really show that much. I mean, I don't know if you can see anything. I'll have to review the footage, but but yeah, I really like these ones. So I've been wearing these ones during the day. And then the bras that I was provided by the hospital is from this brand called Anita and it's the Frontline Open Sports Bra Firm Support. So they gave me two of these bras and I can show you what they look like. It's not the most attractive, but hey. Um, so it's just this kind of, yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's got kind of the Velcro strap here so you can, you know, do what you need to do. You can tighten it or whatever. Um, and yeah, the hooks and I mean, it's pretty straight. It's pretty straightforward. It's it comes up pretty high. So that's why I'm glad that I've got the other ones that I bought. Um, but yeah, I have just been sleeping in this one and it's pretty it's pretty comfy, but I have actually found that it's been, the band has been rolling up a little bit. And when I wake up, it's a bit sore on my incisions. So I think I'm gonna try sleeping in the Delamira ones and just see which I prefer. Um, but yeah, my surgeon said to wear a like supporting bra, like this one or the one that I bought for six weeks. And then from then just to wear one during the day and then at nighttime I can switch to just like a nice like vest top or you know like a very like loose like you know bralette type thing so very excited for that okay so do I have any regrets about this surgery the answer is no like I am so unbelievably happy that I have that I've undergone this. The back pain and the neck pain that I had prior to surgery is virtually all gone. What I would say is that obviously um, I have a lot of work to do in terms of just correcting my posture after years of being hunched over. So I think when things with the pandemic are a bit safer, I'm going to look into seeing a physio again, but just it's a literal weight off my shoulders. Like I can't believe how light I feel. I just I just can't believe it um yeah basically all of the pain is gone and it was pretty much instant relief I don't want to say like from as soon as I woke up I didn't feel anything because I was so out of it when I woke up from surgery like didn't know whether up was down but yeah so I mean I wasn't even paying attention to my back I was just paying attention to how much pain I was in at the front and just how like dazed and confused I felt but from when I was discharged and I got home I realized oh my gosh like I don't have any of this pain I used to have I do still have this one knot in my right shoulder which I have had for years and it's the section that I'm always asking my boyfriend like oh can you please massage it like it hurts so much but all in all I'm feeling so much better I can definitely kind of feel that my back is sort of trying to figure out okay like how are things gonna work now and like different muscles are being used and it's just a very weird like it feels weird I just yeah I've, it feels weird um but it feels so much better and I just I'm so happy I'm so happy I'm really pleased with the size at the moment um I have not measured myself yet because honestly there is no point in measuring myself at one month post-op like there is still a lot of swelling and things are going to be in flux for at least another 11 months so I just thought at this stage there's really not much point in seeing what size I am now because it's not going to be accurate. I guess at three months post I'll probably update you but in terms of what I asked for from the surgeon I asked to be a small d large c so we'll see where things end up.
I guess now I'll probably just have some pictures and the video footage of what I looked like before if I haven't already shown that and just yeah show you what things look like. Okay, so I think that that is pretty much everything that I wanted to include in this video. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. You can, you know, leave a comment down below. You can DM me on Instagram or Twitter. Like, of course, I'll answer. Um, Instagram is probably better just because I'm on there, like, pretty much, you know, 12 hours a day. So, <laughs> um, so you're probably guaranteed a faster response. But yeah, you can message me wherever and you know, I'll get back to you on your questions regarding this surgery and this process. So I think my next video will either be at two months post-op or three months post-op. I still haven't 100% finalized that plan, but I will definitely be doing a six month post-op um, and a one year post-op video. So those are to come. In the meantime, between videos, you can catch up with me on my Instagram, which is at Lil Peach Cutie, uh, on my Twitter, which is at Peony and Cream, and those will all be linked down below. And yeah, I guess I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.